This is the United States Steel Hour. Modern steels from United States Steel. Brighten your work, brighten your leisure, widen your world. This trademark, USS, means the best possible steel at the lowest possible price. Now, live from New York, Anne Francis, Johnny Carson, Glenda Farrell, and Frank McHugh demonstrate that love is not for the faint-hearted. Still not right. Could I see it, please? Lou, it's no good. Oh, Let now, me... wait a minute. It's past 6.30, and I need the layout before I can get out of here. Try it on me. Well, there should be some artwork of this girl, you know, with a wild hair. And she's uh, she's looking back over her shoulder, you know, in kind of a cute, pouty way, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. The French girl in the Turkish towel. Uh-huh. And, well, here's the copy. She filled men with desire. To look at her is to know desire. They called her desire. You're right. It's not right. It's too strong for the Sunday papers? Maybe you could find a good synonym for desire. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that. Uh, propensity, wish, inclination, bent, ardor, fervor. Any of those. All right. She filled men with propensity. To look at her is to know inclination. They called her bent. It'll be 7 o'clock any minute now. Love, relish, request, need, want. Want? Oh, I was supposed to meet a girl at 6 o'clock. Anybody I know? Nah, I met her in a creative writing class at NYU. Lots of luck. Love is a watermelon. Round and smooth and full of mystery. Love is not knowing. Uncertainty runs pity pat on tiny chicken feet through the never ending night. Hold me quiet. Hello? Ken? Where are you? At the office. Oh, no, that's all right. I don't mind. No, I know how important your work is. Anyway, for the next two weeks, we can see each other every day. That is, if you haven't forgotten that you're going to spend your vacation with me. Ah, uh, not a chance. You know, it sounds like a great idea. Oh, sure, we'll do wild things. Uh, explore Staten Island? I, I don't think it's ever been done before. We'll have a ball. The Bronx Zoo at feeding time. The Fulton Fish Market at dawn. Right now, you better get back to work. No, that's all right. You come over when you're finished. There's no real hurry, I suppose. No, I, I suppose not. I'll see you in two minutes. Hey, what about this layout? I'll have the copy on your desk first thing in the morning. Oh, but you're going on vacation. Oh, boy, am I going on vacation. All right, what's so special about this girl? Annie? Lou, this girl? You, you wouldn't believe it. Why yeah. am I wasting time with you anyway? Well, invite me to the wedding. Now, Lou, you don't understand. This is, this is not the girl you marry. This is the kind of girl you know before you're married, if you're lucky. I'm gone. Could be the boss. I don't care whoever it is. Hello? Oh, hold on just a minute. It's your mother. Hello, Mom. Is there anything wrong? No, for heaven's sakes. No, your father's fine, not wood. Well, as far as I know, everybody in Rochester's fine. I just wanted to know what time your train gets in. Uh, that's nice to know, Mom. But, but what train? Well, your vacation starts tomorrow, doesn't it? 
After all, darling, we haven't really seen you since Christmas. Mom, I've been home seven times since Christmas. What do you mean weekends don't count? Oh, well, darling, if you don't want to come home. Mom, I didn't say that. Mom, Mom would you wait a minute? Look, it was swell of you to clean up my old room. I, I certainly appreciate that. Well, the, the fact is I kind of halfway promised to spend some time with a friend, uh, a literary acquaintance. Well, the decision's entirely up to you, dear. You do just as you like. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, I won't be the least bit disappointed. I'll, I'll take the noon train. Well, now, you're absolutely sure that you want to come, dear. Look, all right, all right, Kenny. Yes, we'll be expecting you. Is that Kenny You're on the, the phone? Yeah, your dad just came in, tracking dirt all over my clean kitchen. Oh, I want to talk to him. Yeah, wait a minute, dear. Is that you, Kenny? This Bob. How are you, boy? Oh, that's fine, fine. Yes, dear. How things down in New trip. York? Try and set one of the middle coaches, huh? All right, bye. Is he coming up for the weekend? His vacation. Oh, I don't see why he'd want to waste it around here. Oh. Anybody mind if I come in? Hello, Cora. I was just glancing out of the window and noticed George working in the backyard. You've been glancing out of that window for an hour and a half. Looked like to me you were putting up a new birdhouse. No, no, just a new roof. Not that there was anything the matter with the old one. It leaked. There must be some reason why we never have any birds. Maybe they don't like the neighborhood. What's wrong with the neighborhood? I've lived here all my life. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, Cora. Oh. I just talked to Ted Kenny on the phone. He's coming home for two weeks. Oh, you must be tickled to pieces. Oh, yes, yes. It's always good to have him home, you know, even for a little while. Isn't that a coincidence? I was talking to my niece today, and I was telling her all about Kenny. She's dying to meet him. You know, Rosalinda. Oh, yes, yes, I remember her. An awfully pale girl. Well, her coloring's not too good, but she's as nice as she can be. Yes, I'm sure she is. If it's her health you're worried about, she's strong as an ox. Well, I wasn't even thinking about that, Cora. I know how you want the girl Kenny marries to be just perfect. Oh, I want him to marry the right girl. She doesn't have to be perfect, only right. You see, Kenny has an ideal in mind. We've discussed it many times. <laughs> Kenny hasn't any secrets, you know. Oh, Rosalinda is a wonderful girl. And I'm not just saying that because she's my sweet sister's daughter. Cora, all I said that was she, that she seemed unnaturally pale. Oh, let's just drop the whole subject. Anyway, Kenny's probably taken up with some New York girl by now. He has not. What makes you so sure? He hasn't any secrets from his mother, Cora. <laughs> all the same. You take my word for it. I know Kenny, and I know that he's not the least bit interested in any fancy, fancy New York girl. He's much too serious for that. Oh. <laughs> Annie, <laughs> stop it. Come on, stop it. Stop it. Come on now. I don't like to see you frown. Oh, I can't help it. I've got something to frown about, Annie. <laughs> and <laughs> stop it. You see what happens to girls who go around tickling men? Mm -hmm. You know something? You are delicious. What else? Mm. Overwhelming. What else? Soft, companionable. Like a pal? Uh, more like a chum. Let's get chummy. Uh, Annie, there's, uh, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. I'm listening. Well, I... <laughs> I can't talk when you're listening that way. Do we, do we sit at arm's length? Where are you going? Pose. I'll finish your portrait. Ah, oh, Annie, look. Why don't you clean this pad up a little bit? Why? What's wrong with it? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's cool. Hey, you know, that's real bad. Aw, oh, come on. Don't be a square. Pose. <laughs> Go ahead and talk. I can hear you. Well, the thing is, you see, somebody called me this morning and they, uh, they asked me to do something and I'm afraid I said I would. Mm. That's uh, pretty much the way things stand. Mm -hmm. 
How would you like to take a, a ride on a coal barge? Right this minute? No, sometime next week. I met a barge captain at a cocktail party, and he's dying to take me up the river. I'll bet. Uh, Annie, uh, about next week. No, I think we ought to do something different every day. How do you feel about the dinosaurs at the Museum of Natural History? Uh, lukewarm. Oh, I'd like to pay them a visit, but it is your vacation. What would you like to do? Well, look, Annie, there are certain considerations, you know. Responsibilities that have to be met. Uh, obligations. Oh, I dig. You got jury duty. No, you don't dig. Look, Annie, I, I've got some bad news. Well, lay it on. I'm sturdy. Well, see, I have to go to Rochester. For how long? The whole thing. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Annie. You see, well, Mom called me at the office, and I, I couldn't let her down. Why not? Well, she cleaned up my old room. How dirty was it? Well, I don't suppose it was dirty. I only slept in it two weeks ago. I thought maybe she had to clean it with a shovel. Oh, look, Annie. Annie, be realistic, honey. Look, if I spend two weeks at home, I'll be able to spend more weekends in the city. Love is a watermelon. You like things the way they are. Well, don't you? We're not getting anywhere. I don't suppose we ever will. Ah, Annie, now look. There's no reason things have to change with us. You know, I'm going to go on seeing you when I come back. Mm. Once a week, once every two weeks, then once in a while. Well, I can see us meeting at some crowded kitchen at somebody's party. And you're saying, good grief, Ann McKenzie. I never would have recognized you. Annie, I'll only be gone for two weeks. I'm not going to stay alone in this room. I'm going to go places and meet men. Lots of them, tall, good-looking, they're everywhere. How do you know I won't meet someone I like better than you? No, you won't. Well, I just might. Or maybe you'll meet some sweet Rochester girl who isn't hip or kooky or anything, just the kind of girl you'd want to marry. How do you know the kind of girl I want to marry? I know the kind you don't. And it just dawned on me that's how bright I am. Kenny? Huh? Take me to Rochester, will you? What? Oh, oh that's fantastic. What, what, what would Mom say? Are you afraid of her? Well, no, but I, I don't think she'd understand you. I mean, I don't understand you. She wouldn't approve. Well, I don't expect Mom's ever met a real Greenwich Village character before. A what? Well, you know, all this. Well, when I first met you, you said you liked creative people. I do, but this is nutty. You mean I'm nutty? Last week, you were a Martian. That's what you told the guy at the party. Oh, well, I didn't expect him to believe me. Well, you say funny things, or you, you do nutty things. I mean, and why do you get such a kick out of embarrassing me? Like at the restaurant yesterday. You just shouldn't embarrass so easily. There's a crack in your sense of humor. All right, now, what's so funny about walking out on your bare feet and making me go back for your shoes? Well, instead of crawling around under the wrong table, you should have asked the waiter to get my shoes. He's French. He wouldn't have been embarrassed if I'd left all of my clothes under the table. All right, you see? Now do you see why I can't take you home? Oh, I'm beginning to see all kinds of ratty oh, little things. be reasonable, You don't sweetie. think I'm good enough to meet your mother. You deny that. Look, you're getting all excited over nothing. Well, I ought to belt you one. Well, what for? What for? You get out of my apartment. That's now, look, what for. I deserve a little more go explanation than that. Go, go, go! All right, should I call before you apologize? Apologize? What? Get out of here. All right, all right. Take you to Rochester? I'd rather take home a box full of spiders. Well, from what I've heard of your mother, that would be the perfect gift. Kenny. Is he here yet? Oh, no, Cora. I've got Rosalind on the phone. She won't be able to meet with Kenny for several days. She has to go out of town. She uh, sells beads to all the summer camps, and she got a rush call from some Indian group making a fancy wigwam. Well, now, you know we hadn't planned anything definite. No, but she's terribly disappointed, poor girl. Uh, maybe the fresh air will do her some good. Huh? Well, what'll I tell her? About what? About getting together with Kenny. She keeps an appointment book. Terribly methodical. Oh, I don't know what to tell you, Cora. 
If Kenny has any free time left when Rosalinda gets back, well, maybe. <laughs> but that's not a promise. Good enough, I'll tell her. Hey, Mom. Oh. Mom, I'm home. Kenny. Hi, Mom. Oh, Kenny, oh, you're home. You? Oh, the train was a little late, Mom. Oh, let me huh? look at you. Have you lost weight? Oh, He's I've... putting it on, if you ask me. Uh, How's everything, Mom? Oh, just fine, darling, just fine. We still don't have any birds in the birdhouse. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, are you hungry? Ah, oh, not very. Ah, uh, couldn't you manage a little piece of pie? Dutch apple? Uh-huh, I made it myself. Well, I'm probably good. Well, I'll have some a little later, Mom. I want to unpack where my ties wrinkle anyway. Uh, uh, George, you take your suitcase No, upstairs. I can take it, Pop. Don't worry about it. Kenny, you have lost weight. Uh, if you don't I'll bet this is Cora. Sure, I can put some... <laughs> Hello. Oh. I'll bet you're Ken's father. I looked for you on the train, I couldn't find you anywhere. He kept begging for me to come to Rochester with him, but I didn't know whether I could until the last moment. But here I am. Hello. Let me look at you. Yes, you're his mother. I could have picked you out in the crowd. Uh, uh, uh Mom, <clears throat> Mom, this is, uh, Ann McKenzie. She's, uh, uh, she's... We're chums. <laughs> This is the United States Steel Hour. Now, a word from George Hicks. In merry old England, life was gay and the king was Richard III. He entertained in a royal way, but the meals were rather absurd. Things went that way for many a day, till Henry VIII was crowned. Now, here was a king who liked uh, new things and was always looking around. He popped his cork when he spotted a fork and started to change the rules. No matter how well he'd been eating by hand, he could eat twice as well with tools. It was true for Henry, and true today, that tools are necessary. There are tools to clothe and tools to feed and tools to fetch and carry. Tools of industry, tools of trade, to get things done and to get things made. Tools of leisure, tools of sport, tools to educate and report. Tools to compete in the building race and tools to explore outer space. Tools for factories, tools for schools, and still more tools to make the tools. Now, a lot of the tools that we have today, the plants and mills and the rest, are paid for out of profits that companies reinvest. For industry's profit dollar is the greatest tool of all. It makes the oil wells deeper and makes the cities tall. When a company earns a profit and each owner gets a share, the remaining money determines how the company's growth will fare. For it must consider the future a needed mine or mill. Things would come to a pretty pass if industry just stood still. Indeed, our growth and progress depends on the profit rate, for profits pay for tools, and tools keep America great. Now we return to Act Two of Queen of the Orange Bowl, adapted by Bob Van Skoik from a story by Roger Squire. This is Kenny's room. You'll have to sleep on an army cot in my sewing room. We don't have a guest room. Oh, I don't mind. This is fascinating. You were a boy for a long time, weren't you? No longer than usual. Uh, Mom, you better get some towels and things, huh? Oh, isn't this adorable? Now, I can't imagine you having the patience to put one of these together. I didn't put it together. Mom made it. Oh, well, Kenny was never very handy with his hands, you know. And I, ju I just thought they'd look nice in his room. Well, did you make all of these? They're not very hard once you get the knack. But did you see this little pocket battleship? Oh, Look, Mom, <laughs> I'm sure Ann's not interested in that. Yes, I am. Look, you got some things to do, haven't you, Mom? Oh. Huh? 
Yes, well, well, <laughs> it was, uh, it was awfully nice of the office to let you both take your vacation at the same time. Oh, we don't work together. No? Why, Kenny, I thought you told me. No. I got that idea. <laughs> well, I suppose you both have lots of friends in common, though, and that's how you happen to meet. We don't have any friends in common. Oh, is that, is that so? Uh, Mom, it's really not very mysterious. Yeah, yeah, and it's none of my business. No, I'll, I'll be happy to explain. No, it's quite all right. You don't, don't have to do <laughs> Actually, it's, it's kind of funny how we met. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I, I'm sure it is. Well, it doesn't matter. I, I want you to make your guest feel right at home. All right, Annie. What are you doing here? Guesting. Annie, you were not invited. Would you put that heavy bag on the bed, please? Annie, this is my home. My home. Do you know what that means? Mm-hmm. Apple pie and mother. Yes, and I'm not going to let you stay here and make fun of it. Is that what you think I'm going to do? Well, what are you going to do? Change. Now, watch it. Go. You can't tell me to get out of my own room. Why didn't your mother know my name? What? You've talked to her on the phone. You've been home on weekends. You've written to her. Why didn't you ever mention me? The subject just never came up. Mm. You mean you never brought the subject up? All right, Annie. Now do you see how impossible it is for you to stay? What are those? Short shorts. Do you like them? You can't wear those in front of my mom. Aren't you a little worried about Dad? Annie, you cannot wear those in front of my mother. Get out or I'll belt Annie, you. Go on. Annie, out, Annie, out, Annie, out. Annie, out. Annie this, is, this isn't Greenwich Village. It's Rochester. These are my people. Ann McKenzie. That's a good old Scottish name. Inviting that girl up here without a word to us. You know, that isn't a bit like Kenny. You, well, you did look a little bowled over. <laughs> I never did like surprises. That's today's paper. Yes, sir, you're not going to mess up the house now. Isabel, just for the sake of argument, what do you think of her? Well, she's a very pretty girl. The world's full of pretty girls. Maybe so. But how many of them ever drop in here? Hello? Oh, we're in here, Cora. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Well, where is Kenny? Isn't he home? He's upstairs with his visitor. Visitor? A young lady. Oh, for goodness sake. A friend of his from Greenwich Village. And you didn't even know about her? No. You don't suppose? What? That they're secretly married. Ready. Well, my cousin Florence was secretly married for 17 years. Her mother didn't approve of the man. He was a toe dancer. Oh, no, no, Cora. They're just friends. Mm hmm What do you mean, hmm? Something is going on. Well, oh, hi, Cora. Oh! I here he comes now. I didn't know you were here. Ah, oh, let me look at you. I think you're losing some of your oh, hair. God. You still have some, though. Well, Where's this girl we've been hearing so much about? Uh, she's changing clothes. Uh, would you excuse me? Mm, I didn't think those Greenwich Village people ever changed clothes. Oh, the things they wear down there. Rosalinda sold beads one summer at the art exhibit, and she told me she was all shook up by it. Why? What do they wear? Whatever is handy, if anything. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hmm. Kenny, where uh, are you I going? I forgot something upstairs, Mom. Hello. Annie, you're as pretty as a picture. Oh, Cora, this is Kenny, uh, Anne McKenzie. This is my next door neighbor, Cora Wiley. Welcome to our city. Thank you. Oh. I'm so thrilled. Well, if you'll excuse it, I promise you she'll hand some of the points. Oh, uh, no, you know, some other time. I'd much rather talk well, to Annie, your mother. at least let me show you the rest of the house. Uh, right out here is our dining room, and, and through this door is uh, Mom's kitchen. You ask me, she's too pretty for her own good. Ah, uh, horseradish. George. George, as long as you're not doing anything else, why don't you go up in the attic and look for that army cop? I'm going to read the paper. It's in the basement. A girl like that could get around almost anyone. She won't get around me. Oh. All right, Annie. Look, do you think you can fool my mother? She'll see through this little orphan Annie routine in a minute. Well, she's not nearly as rough as I thought she'd be. And where did you get that dress? You look like a pilgrim. Well, your father didn't think so. Look, Annie, fun is fun, but bear one thing in mind when you talk to my mother. She's your best girl. I wished you wouldn't say things like that. Oh, boy, when you get home, you're a stuffed turkey. All right, Annie, just bear this in mind, will you, that my mother and her friends don't share your nonconformist views of life. 
What views? Well, you know, the artsy stuff. Modern poetry, abstract painting, Sigmund Freud, Mort Saul, that whole area. I'll stay out of that area. Good. I'll talk about us. No, for Pete's sakes. I'll play it cool. Annie, why do you have to play it at all? Sweet and cool. Oh. Ken? What? Somebody could walk out here. Yes. Shall we join the ladies? Mrs. Rouch, your kitchen is just charming. Oh, do you think so? Oh, yes, it's exactly like the kind I'd love to have someday. Henny. Henny. Hmm? Why don't you go upstairs and finish unpacking? What? Oh, sure. been pursuing a new interest. Oh? What line are you in? Education. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Kenny. Kenny, how tall are you? Oh, no, about five. no, don't tell me. I'll tell you. You are exactly four inches longer than this army cop. How do you know that? Everybody is four inches longer than an army cop. That's the way the manufacturer. <laughs> I don't mind that, Pop, but it's just, it's just room. It gives me a, an uneasy feeling. Well, of course it does. And there's a very good reason why. It's haunted. <laughs> is that what it is? Sure. Oh, uh, Kenny, this girl you brought home. Yeah, what, what about her? Well, she seems to be a pretty good sort. What makes you say that? Well, you've been acting kind of nervous. I thought maybe you might like to hear an opinion, even if it is only mine. Look, Pop, she's not here for inspection. Maybe not. But right now, she's being judged on more points than Miss America. Hello. Am I interrupting? No, 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 not at all. I was just comparing you to Miss America. She had better look out. I could kiss you for that. Well, go right ahead. No, not in front of the children. <laughs> <laughs> I never was Miss America, but I was Queen of the Orange Bowl once. Queen of the Orange Bowl, is that so? Well, what do you know about that? That's quite a big honor. I had my picture on the cover of a magazine. No kidding. Can I help you? No, no, thanks. Thanks just the same. I'm used to making the beds around here. Well, if you're sure. I'm sure, thank you. Why queen of the orange bowl? Why didn't you tell him you're queen of Romania? Oh, you're frowning. I don't like that. Annie, not here. Annie, not here, please. No, no, no. Annie. I don't care what she was queen of. I'll make up my own mind about her. Anyway, that doesn't prove anything. She wasn't picked for her personality alone. Well, a good figure is no handicap to a woman. Isabel, I remember you when you were her age. Your figure was the best in Monroe County. Oh. Yes, it was. Oh, yes, it George. was. <laughs> Besides, it does prove one thing. She's popular. Well, she was popular enough with you. She no sooner got here than she was kissing you all over. Just a peck on the cheek. No harm in being affectionate. And this girl does have a lot of the qualities you're always looking for in a wife for Kenny. She's popular. With men, I shouldn't wonder. She's a good looker. Beauty's only skin deep. She's modest. That's nothing to brag about. She has good manners and she's very neat. The next thing you'll be saying, she's a good housekeeper. Well, if she isn't, I can always teach Kenny how to run the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> okay, what do you 
are you doing up there? Helping your mother. Oh, does she know it? Oh, I thought I'd surprise her. Pop said she was dusting in here. Who said? Your father. Pop? No, that's what he told me to call him. Now you have an interesting library. The Rover Boys and the Runaway Locomotive. It's one of yours. Uh, all right. Come on down from there. Pretty soon. Right now. Okay. <laughs> Kenny, honestly, put me down. <sighs> Mr. Roush said you were in here dusting the books. You don't have to do anything like that, you know. They were dusted this morning. Please let me help. I just love to do work around the house. It gives me such a feeling of fulfillment. Why, at home, I just can't do enough. After she finished dusting the books, she washed the windows. No. Yes. Then she beat the rugs. The rugs? And did a beautiful job. Better than I ever did. Oh, are you invited to dinner? No. But I think I'll stay anyway. I hate to miss anything. So, what do you think of her now? I'm still keeping an open mind. Knives on the right, forks on the left. Mm. Well, don't tell me we're eating in the dining room. What's wrong with the kitchen? Special occasion. President Eisenhower and the Supreme Court are coming to dinner. Oh. She assumed we eat in here, so here's what we'll eat. So where is she now? Upstairs, flat on her back after all that housework? No, she's out in the kitchen. What's she doing out there? Fixing dinner. What? She says there's nothing she likes better than whipping up a meal. All right, Annie. What is that? Lamb curry. Well, what's in there? A pie. Dutch apple? I hear it's your favorite. You know darn well it is. Now, what's the, what's the big idea? Well, you're a smart fellow. You figure it out. All right, Annie. You can stop playing house now. It won't work. You can't impress me with this act. I know you. You didn't know I could cook. Oh, you probably had the whole thing catered. I wouldn't put it past you. I have your mother as a witness. Just wait till you taste this. Oh, it's delicious. In fact, it's irresistible. Ken, would you bring in the rice, please? Yes, dear. It's all Annie's fault. She is upstairs right now, crying her eyes out. Well, he never ran out on one of my meals. I felt like running out on a lot of them. That food looked pretty darn good. Didn't it, Cora? Tasted even better than it looked. I tried a couple of mouthfuls. Stacy, he probably got nervous waiting for you to say just one kind word about Annie. But no, no, she can't satisfy you. The truth is, you're a little bit jealous. Oh, horseradish. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're like a mama cat when anybody comes near one of her kittens. That's a terrible thing to say to me in front of Cora. Oh, don't mind me. Always talking about the ideal girl. And then when she does show up, you can barely stand oh, it. Oh, stop talking. Where's Kenny? Why don't you go out and look for it? All right, I will. I'll go out and look for it. I'll go out right now. Isabel, I like that girl. And if you don't like her, then you're no better at picking a daughter-in-law than my mother was. Good night. time I've ever known George to lose his temper. It's that girl. <laughs> Cats are mice. Dogs and cats, men and women. You know, behind every great man, there's a woman. Thomas Edison. Now, he invented the incandescent bulb. And the very first thing his wife said was, Tom, turn out the light and come to bed. All the wars in the world are started by women. That's the truth. 
How's that? Well, they nag a man so around the house till he gets so mad he wants to go out and fight the first person he runs into. To the masculine race. Wait a minute. I'll drink to that. The tragic thing is, gentlemen, that there is nothing sweeter nor more comforting on the face of the earth than the tender smile of a loving woman. I wouldn't give you a nickel for the whole lot. I'll drink to that. No. I should not have said that. There are some very exceptional women in the world. My mother. Rest your soul. This is your grandmother. She was one in a million. How about Grandpa? He loved her dearly. And she wouldn't give the poor old man one minute's peace. He loved her dearly. Sir, my father loved my mother dearly. <laughs> Look, now what is it, huh? Can anybody tell me that? Ah, uh, fondness, uh, liking, affection, attachment, uh, friendship. My uh, son, Arthur. Timmy, is a writer of words. His foreign movie ads are masterpieces of their kind. You don't say. My, my pop works in a pencil factory, the eraser division. Oh. People are inclined to make mistakes. Right. Pop, tell me something. Did, did you wait for the right girl? Well, suppose the right girl did come along. I mean, I, I haven't even seen the world yet. You won't either. I never saw it. But if I was a single man, I'd go out and see it fast enough. You know something? I'd go with you, too. Would you, Kenny? Uh, well, say, that's awful nice of you. Where would we go first? You pick a place. Hey. Shh, shh. The land of Wicky Wacky. Huh? Oh, it's beautiful. Huh? Oh. Don't, don't, uh, don't spoil it. Well, where did you learn that? Where else? In college, Pop. Huh? I'm glad all that money wasn't wasted. Come on, Pop, you try it. No, 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 no. Come I on, never Pop. went to college. You don't learn to swing it, they won't let you on the island. Perhaps I better stay on the boat. Come on, Pop, you only live once. Now you've hit me in my weak spot. <laughs> Time. You'll wake somebody up. The door is open. Oh. Ah, uh, don't you believe her? Uh, you know, she's always saying things like that. George! George, what have you done to him? Yeah, George, what'd you he do to me? I brought you home. He brought me home. None too soon. Oh, come either. on, let's get him upstairs, George. Ah, ah, there. There she is, the queen of the kindergarten. He's had a drink. Hey, come on, you come know on, something, you George. You know something? You gotta give her credit. She, oh. she fools us all. You know what she really is? Yes, yeah, she's our guest. Oh, no, she isn't. She's a humbug, and she's a, she's a flim-flam, and she's a... Bamboozler. Yeah. You can save your breath. I'm leaving anyway. Goodbye. Oh, Naomi. Oh, George! George, Kenny! Oh, Kenny, for heaven's sakes! Oh, my God. Some George, people Kenny. just shouldn't drink. Oh. Annie, this is a... Uh, Annie. Annie. Annie's gone. That girl frightened my corner. <coughs> <laughs> hey, 
This is the United States Steel Hour. Hear now about a new style of living from Jack Brand. You're sitting pretty with furniture styled in steel. See for yourself. You're sitting pretty because furniture designers are using today's highly stylable steels to create a beautiful new style of living. Easy living with the latest in chairs and tables, the smartest new designs in sofas, the loveliest kitchen and dinette sets, all furniture with a flair. A flair for fashion, for that don't have a care in the world comfort because practically nothing can mar furniture styled in steel. The same thing goes in the world of business, too. Steel is for sitting pretty. For office furniture styled in steel, now comes in a bright array of decorator colors with units that provide a place for everything. Drawers and doors work smoothly always because steel never warps or sticks. Office furniture of steel is a lifetime investment in office efficiency and in a smart look that speaks well of the company. And last but not least, you're sitting pretty right in your own backyard. For steel gives lawn furniture a sunny disposition. The colors are bright and fade proof. The finish is so hard and smooth it laughs off dirt and weather. Steel lawn furniture is substantial enough so a bump or strong winds won't knock it over light enough to move easily, and sturdy enough for solid comfort. Like your unbeatable steel barbecue, it has all the abilities to give you a lifetime of fun. Steel hats. Stylability. Steel hats. Durability. Steel hats. Cleanability. Dependability. Smart usability. Steel hats. Every ability that makes a product better for you. Get all the abilities of steel when you buy. This mark tells you a product is made of steel. Look for it when you buy. And now, from our studio in New York, Act Three of Queen of the Orange Bowl, adapted by Bob Van Scoyt, from a story by Roger Squire. Love is a loaded pistol, a dangerous weapon in the hands of children. Love is a rusty nail in the foot, and a disease for which there is no cure. Love is a poisoned apple, I'm Snow White. All right, Pop. Well, hello, Kenny. I didn't expect to find you home. Is this any way to spend your vacation? No, I'm all right, Pop. How are things at the pencil factory? Ah, <sighs> same as usual. Every day, we face a tremendous crisis. Shall we manufacture more yellow pencils or more red pencils? And shall they contain soft, medium, or hard lead? How'd it turn out today? Yellow and medium. I won the pool. Eight dollars. Kenny, how come you're hanging around the house? No, I just catching up on my reading, Pop. Well, it must be something pretty good to keep you indoors on a day like this. Oh, this is real meaty stuff. Hey, listen to this. The fun-loving rover chuckled as his canoe went over the waterfall and plunged into the seething torrent below. Uh-huh. Kenny, you ought to go out and see people. There's nobody to see, Pop. There's a telephone. In case there's anyone in particular that you'd want to call. Anywhere in particular. Huh? I can't think of anybody, Pop. Suit yourself. I wonder if we still have that deck of cards around the house. What for? 
I thought perhaps after a while we could have a rousing game of old maid. So, this is where Ken's brain functions the best. Ooh, that's crazy wallpaper. Well, he's not due back from his vacation for several days yet. I know. I didn't want to take a chance of running into him. Which is his desk? Oh, right there. Presents? Yep, from Ken to me. This is a farewell gift of my own. You breaking up with him? I've broken up with him. Oh, well. Mind if I offer a little constructive criticism? I'm in the art department, so I know what I'm talking about. It isn't very good, is it? Oh, I don't know. Look at the color of that right eye. Well, it was supposed to be the same color as the left, but I ran out of blue. Oh, don't minimize. Van Gogh achieved some of his best effects by accident. You mean you like this? Oh, well, to be brutally frank, I only like 95% of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken hated all of it. That's why I'm giving it to him. Oh, well, Ken is not in the art department. What does he know about painting? What does he know about anything? Miss McKenzie, there's a painting at the Guggenheim I'd like very much to show you. What about this afternoon? Well, I... Then cocktails? Dinner? No, I'm sorry. Oh, you have a date? No. I... Oh, well, then you probably have a very good reason for staying home alone. No, not really. Well, I don't know why I shouldn't go out with you as well as anybody else. Preferably me. Can you think of any reason? Oh, none whatsoever. Neither can I. All right. We've got a date. I'm glad to meet you. Likewise. Kenny! Shake leg! You're gonna miss that train! I don't see why Kenny has to go back so soon. He finished his book. He still has another day left on his vacation. Perhaps he can find something better to do with it in New York City. He can use the rest. Rest? He slept so late yesterday, I went up and took his pulse. Hey, Kenny! Come on, Pop. Come on. You got everything? I think so. Yeah, here. Thanks. Goodbye, Mom. Oh, Kenny, I wish you'd stay. Mom, it's only a day early. I mean forever. I'm sure Mr. Davis would give you your old job back at the grocery store. Mom, you always say that. Oh, I know, I know. I just keep hoping. Ah, goodbye, Mom. Take just care sit, of yourself. Try and sit one of the middle cars, dear. They're safer. Here, here, I made you some sandwiches. Goodbye, Mom. Oh, Mom. Right, oh, 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 Isabel. I can't it. help it. Here come the waterworks. Let's go. Kenny. Chin up, Mom. Bye-bye. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, for Pete's sake. Hello, hello. Laura. Well, what is all this? I I'm running for train. But you can't leave yet. You haven't met Rosalinda. Uh, some other time, maybe? But she's right here. Honey, come here and say uh, hello Laura, to Kenny. I'd, I'd love to meet her, but I just don't have time today to meet... Hi there. Uh, uh, won't you come in? Can he? Huh? The train? Oh, Pop, there's plenty of time. I got a whole other day. So you're uh, Rosalinda, huh? I just knew they'd get along. She's still pale. That color on her face came out of a jar. The right girl got away. You'll just have to get used to the wrong ones. Hi, Lou. Hey, you were due back this morning. Oh, the boss was I asking know. for you. I know. I kept missing trains. Well, we have any new problems? Yeah. Hmm? Didn't we use an ad like that once before? Identical. The client liked it so much he wants to use it for all his foreign films, whether it fits or not. It usually fits. Yeah. The problem is the copy. Oh, let me see. She was a woman. When she walked down the street, everyone pointed and whispered, there goes a woman. What pinhead wrote this? The boss. Oh. Can you fix it? Well, at least I can correct the spelling. I've uh, never known you to miss a train before. Well, I've never met a girl like Rosalinda. Whew. Oh, you met a girl back home. Uh -huh. Oh, well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Takes a load off my mind. How's that? Well, I met a girl, too. Someone you know. Huh? Annie? She left those things for you. Yeah, I... I gave her that for Christmas. 
I've uh, been taking her out. Annie? Yeah. She's quite a gal. We've been all over town. The zoo, all the art museums. Did you ever go up the river in a coal barge? It's a wonderful experience for two people getting to know each other. Well, it's nice to know you have so many interests in common. It doesn't bother you? Me? Heavens to Betsy, no. I wish you all the luck in the world. Buddy? Well, I mean, if I thought there was even a spark Look, left. just forget it, will you? Let me get to work on this. Hello. Mom? Oh, Kenny, it's so good to hear your voice again. Mom, I just got back. But what are my plans? F for when? Labor Day? Well, I thought maybe we could have a picnic up at the lake the way we used to. Remember how you left to sail your little boat? Yeah, look, Ma Mom. Mom, would you wait a minute, please? Look, I'm getting a little too old for that jazz. Look, I I'm not coming home. Not for a while, anyway. Look, Mom, you see more of me now than you did when I lived there and went to school. Why, why, Kenny, why, what a thing to say to me. Well, well, maybe you are all mixed up, dear, but, but I don't see what I've got to do with it. Well, of course you're coming home. Now, wait a minute, Ken Kenny, wait a minute. Don't hang up, dear, I'm not finished talking. Kenny, Ken Isabel, guess what? We got a bird. A bird in the birdhouse. This is a little bit of a fella. Just right out of the home nest. <laughs> what? What's the matter? Oh, George. Did it ever strike you that nature gives us mothers a stinking raw deal? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's you. I found this junk in my office. Keep it. If there's one thing I'm not, it's an Indian giver. I don't want your junk. Well, look, why don't you just scatter it around? You'll never notice it in here. What did you do to the place? I cleaned it. Oh, you ruined it. It used to have atmosphere. That was dirt. Well, whatever it was, I liked it. <laughs> now it's only a room. Lou likes it this way. Well, what does Lou know? He's in the art department. You pick those things up. Well, let Lou pick them up. He likes things neat. One thing about Lou, he's consistent. Well, what is that supposed to mean? It means you have a split personality and I don't like either half. Oh, and your own personality is whole and wholesome, huh? Uh, listen, honey, I knew you when. Yes, when I was trying to be the girl I thought you wanted and I thought you wanted a beatnik. You didn't have to try so hard. First time I saw you, I said, Greenwich Village. Mm -hmm. Those were my kindergarten clothes. It was beatnik day. Oh, Annie, can't you ever tell the truth? I am telling the truth. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Sure, and you were also queen of the orange bowl. Yes, I was, two years ago. Or was it three? Now, don't forget, you had your picture on a national magazine cover, too. Yes, in a bathing suit. I have a copy. Yeah, sure. Now, where is that? Oh, Annie. Well, I can't find anything around here anymore. Why do you keep insisting? I must have thrown it out by mistake. Look, Annie, so you told a few miserable lies to my family. Just admit it, I'm willing to forgive you. Are you? Of course. I won't hold a grudge. Just say you're sorry and we'll let it go at that. Will we? I'm sorry. There, you see? You see how easy it was? And you do forgive me? Well, of course. Oh, Kenny. Ah, oh, Anna, not necessary. Ah, oh, honey. Let's never break up again. Hey, you know what? I saved all of Labor Day. We can see the whole city together. I've saved something for you, too. Oh, you'll have to go there with me. I can't go alone. Anywhere. Anywhere at all. Well, it's City Hall Marriage License Bureau. Now, Annie, look. No. Nope. You look. Now, you make up your mind. Do you want a perfect girl, or do you want me? Well? Did you ever have one of those days when you just couldn't make decisions? What time does the girl call? Mr. 
Isabel! Isabel! What? You remember that girl that Kenny brought home, that Annie? I don't choose to remember her, thank you. I was cleaning out the magazines in the attic, and guess what I found? Never mind, dear. We won't ever have to see her again. <laughs> Piper Laurie stars January 27th on the United States Steel Hour with Donald Moppet and special guest star Florence Reed in You Can't Have Everything, a powerful and unusual drama about a marriage on the brink of disaster. That's January 27th, the United States Steel Hour, produced by the Theater Guild. You. Yes, you. You're sitting pretty with furniture styled in steel. The newest, the smartest, the easiest living furniture for your home. The neatest, most efficient, most smartly businesslike furniture for any office. The brightest, gayest, most fun for all furniture under the sun. You're even sitting pretty when your garden tools are steel, power tools and fine hand tools. Because steel has the durability and all the other abilities to make a product better for you, whether it's a garden tool or a coffee table. So if you want your home to look smart and be comfortable, if you want your office to look smart and be efficient, if you want your patio to look smart and be fun, choose furniture styled in steel and be sitting pretty. you to join us tomorrow night when it's time to tell the truth on most of these stations. Modern Steels from United States Steel. Lighten your work, brighten your leisure, widen your world. This trademark, USS, means the best possible steel at the lowest possible price. This is Andre Baruch speaking. Body, mind, and spirit. These are the three things symbolized by the YMCA Triangle. The YMCA offers all types of programs, from gym to educational classes. There's something for everyone in the YMCA. This is National YMCA Week. Find out what your YMCA has to offer you and your family. Join now. A young flight officer is forced to crash land on an unknown planet's surface in Friday night's tense Twilight Zone adventure on the CBS television network.